In this video, we will talk about the excess degree distribution of a network. This is the distribution that governs the degree of a random neighbor of a random vertex. The excess degree distribution will be important when we talk about the spread of disease on a network. Our main result is an unfortunate theorem from network science. I have bad news for you. Your friends are more popular than you are. Here's what I mean using network terms. Consider a very large network where there is no correlation between the degrees. This is another way of saying that the edges between vertices are entirely random. Let V be a randomly chosen vertex and let W be a randomly chosen neighbor of V. Then on average, the degree of the random neighbor W will be larger than the degree of the original vertex V. In layman's terms, the average degree of my friends is usually larger than my degree. And here is why this makes sense. When I pick a vertex uniformly at random, every vertex is equally likely. But when I follow a random edge, vertices with large degree will occur more frequently. More edges lead to those vertices than to low degree vertices. So let's dig into the math behind this intuition. We're going to have to start by defining what no correlation between degrees means. We let p sub k denote the fraction of vertices with degree k. This is just the degree distribution of the network. We let p sub i k denote the fraction of degree k neighbors of vertices with degree i. The phrase no correlation between degrees means that p of i k is equal to p of k. In other words, knowing the degree of the current vertex doesn't give me any information about the degree of its neighbors. Now we should note that this no correlation requirement does not apply to many real world networks. In some of those networks, high degree vertices like to connect to other high degree vertices. Such a network is called assortative. There are other networks where high degree vertices tend to connect to low degree vertices. Those networks are called disassortative. Here is a visual example of both an assortative network and a disassortative network. Assortative networks include collaboration networks like co-authorship, or co-starring in movies, and disassortative networks include technological and biological networks such as the World Wide Web and protein-protein interaction networks. So our results today apply to networks with an even more random structure than either of these types of networks. We are restricting ourselves to an idealized model that we can analyze mathematically. However, the simple model is informative. Let's talk about a process that creates a network with uncorrelated degrees. Here is the configuration model. We start with a desired degree sequence. We then create vertices with the appropriate number of edge stubs. Then we randomly wire these edge stubs together. And during this process, the pairing of edges is entirely random. The probability that a given stub leads to a vertex of degree k does not depend upon the degree of the source of the stub. So let's assume that we are looking at a network with uncorrelated degrees. Let's pick a vertex at random and look at its degree. The expected value is, of course, just the expected degree of the graph. Now let's try a second method of sampling. Starting at vertex V, we follow a random edge to a neighbor W of V. This process favors vertices of higher degree. This is where we need to define the excess degree of the target vertex W. The excess degree of the vertex W is the number of additional edges adjacent to V. In other words, we count all of the edges incident with W, except for the one that we just traveled. So saying that W has excess degree K is the same thing as saying that W has total degree K plus one. Now the probability Q sub K that vertex W has excess degree K is the fraction of edges that lead to a vertex of degree K plus one divided by the average degree. Now that we have a formula for the excess degree distribution, we can find a formula for the expected degree of the vertex W. In order to find the expected value of the vertex W, we're going to use the excess degree. So we need to multiply Q sub K by K plus one. Once again, the excess degree is one lower than the actual number of edges that are incident with W. And when we use our formula, we find that the expected degree of random neighbor w is the expected value of the degree squared divided by the expected value of the degree. 
and we can now see that the expected degree of vertex w is in fact larger than the expected degree of vertex v. When we take the difference of these two values, the numerator we get is actually the variance of the degree distribution. And the variance is non-zero, unless of course all of the vertices have the exact same degree. And this proves that the degree of a random vertex is smaller than the degree of a random neighbor of that vertex. To summarize, if we pick a random vertex v, then we get a sample from the degree distribution of the graph. If we then pick a random neighbor w of that random vertex v, then we get a sample from the excess degree distribution of the graph. This excess degree distribution is biased towards higher degree vertices because these vertices are at the ends of more edges. In other words, the expected degree of a random neighbor is larger than the expected degree of a random vertex. And this explains why your friends are more popular than you. The notion of excess degree will play an important role when we study epidemics on networks. The reason is that the disease will be passed along an edge. So when the disease tries to infect someone new, it must travel along one of the excess edges of an infected vertex. We will explore the effects of network structure on the spread of disease in our next video.